Hey guys, I'm Tana Jay, and today I want to talk to you about exactly why we do the weird and strange things that we do and how you can change your habits when you choose to. Um, so in the last video I talked about, you know, why do we have these knee-jerk emotional reactions to normal average everyday things like spiders and roller coasters and why I personally just love the rain so much when so many other people absolutely hate it. So if you want to see that, go ahead and check back on my last video and watch that. Uh, read through the blog. There's a lot of good stuff in there, a lot of scientific evidence to back up you know, some, some good stuff in there. So go ahead and check that out. But today, I want to talk about exactly how you can change and break those habits if you choose to. So we do the things that we do because unconsciously we're trying to seek pleasure and avoid pain. I mean, that's the basis of every de decision-making process in our lives, at least according to Tony Robbins. So in doing some training that I've recently done with Tony, um, he taught this really cool tip, and I want to give it to you guys. So if you're trying to t change a habit, like, for example, quitting smoking, you've probably developed a belief system along the way that says that smoking is pleasurable. There's some satisfaction to it, you get to relax, it's a break, there's a reason why you do it. So when most people just try to quit, they try to quit and then they start smoking again and they try to quit and they start smoking again. Well, why? And it's because they still associate so much pleasure with smoking and so much pain and discomfort with not smoking. So how do we change that? Well, first, we need to start associating a lot of pain with the things that we want to stop doing. So for example, if smoking is one of the things that you're trying to quit, you're going to want to start associating a lot of pain with smoking. I don't mean physical pain, don't go and hurt yourself, but maybe you're going to want to Google smoking-related diseases or go and visit the emphysema wing at a hospital or go to the morgue and see all the people who have died from, you know, this unhealthy habit. And every time you think about smoking, you're going to want to allow yourself to experience that pain. And is that a little morbid? Is it a little, you know, masochistic? Yeah. And it's a means to an end. You know, it's short-term temporary pain to save yourself the long-term temporary pain of the reality of the situation. So the next thing you're going to want to do is associate a lot of pleasure with quitting smoking. And, you know, you can do this in many different ways. Um, you can reward yourself you know, materialistically for your small victories and reward, you know, your small victories. Um, and you can also, in those, you know, those moments when you just have a split second to start feeling the pleasure from that, you can do things like, if it is like something like quitting smoking, you can, you know, sit there and truly experience the joy that you know you're going to feel at your child's wedding or college graduation or when you go jet skiing for the first time, or when you're able to take a hike without being out of breath, and you're able to do all of these things because you have made the decision to quit smoking. So you allow yourself to fully experience that joy. And why are both of these things so, so important? Well, you're going to want to interrupt that pattern. You're going to want to stop associating pleasure with whatever it is that you want to stop doing, obviously. Um then you won't want to go back to it. When you associate enough pain with something, you'll stop doing it. Um, and then, you know, if you only do that, your success will only be short-lived. Because if you're only experiencing pain, why not? Why not at least give yourself that little break, that little pleasure, right? Well, um, when you start associating more pleasure with with changing your habit, with moving forward, with whatever that different habit that you're going to develop is, or with whatever you're not going to be doing anymore, you have something to pull you towards it. You have something to pull you towards in the future that's going to sustain lasting change. Um, this has really worked in my own life. I use it for procrastination. So it's kind of the opposite. I associated a lot of pleasure with not doing things I should do, with doing things like watching TV and things that really weren't beneficial in my life. And I had to start associating a lot of pain with that and start associating a lot of pleasure with taking massive action. And it's worked. And um, so I know it's worked personally for me in my own life and 
plenty of different aspects and and I hope you guys will try it out and let me know how it goes and hook up with me guys I love to chit chat so have a blessed and beautiful day